this is how I glaze planters. Um, so I do my planters with a hole through the bottom so the water can drain out. And the first step is wax resisting. And there are two things you want to do when wax resisting these. First is get some wax around the hole through the bottom because sellotape sticks really well to wax resist. So you can seal it up with sellotape, which means you can pour the glaze on the inside. And then the other thing is to just define a line that you can glaze down to. So you don't need to go past that, but I'll dip to that line um, with sellotape sealing the hole. And then I've got, and this is a Giffen grip, by the way, in case you aren't familiar with them, they're very useful. So I centre the foot in the gift of it and then so this is the the tray rather that it sits on define the dip out a bit and then give a section for the dent puller to stick to the first step in glazing the planter is to put the contrast glaze around the rim is Celta Chan and it's the turquoise that I use quite a lot of. Um, then what you want to do is take a slightly damp sponge and just wipe around to make sure there's no dust on it. This piece should be okay because it only just came out of this kiln. Um, I've done loads of dots on this is a slightly altered version of the impulse design um, which I'm just trying. So to start with I don't bother sealing the hole makes it easier to dip. Um, just dip down so you coat the top band in this glaze which will then flow over the dots once the floating blue has been added to it. Set it aside, let it dry for a few minutes. Next, do exactly the same with the um, catcher tray except this time I'm using my car dent puller little suction cup with a handle and then we wax resisted that part before so you could just sucker it on and it holds it like that dip it in the glaze roll it around to coat and then I'm going to pour floating blue into the base anyway but that should all blend nicely I might actually, just because there's such a small area left in the middle, fill it up. Normally, if the, either I do solid colour like this, or just in the inside the rim. In this case, solid colour should work quite well. The next glaze for this, on both the inside and outside, is floating blue. This is a slightly modified version of my normal floating blue that I'm trying at the moment where it's got manganese in place of red iron oxide um, gives it a nicer colour where it's thin I don't know how well this will show on there but rather than going a sort of greeny brown it goes a bluey purple almost to black where it's well where do you get a variation so the phase separation gives you a few different colours in it and I prefer the colours you get in that, that aren't blue. Okay, now actually having said that I was going to tape over the bottom of it, I don't have to for this because it's glazed the same inside now. So what I can do is hold it through the, the drainage hole at the bottom and just dunk all the way up to my work resist line. And remove it, shake the drips off. I'll have to touch up the inside where my finger is, but other than that, it should be perfect. And then repeat the same steps 
on the tray that I did last time, you want to make sure the dent puller has got some moisture on it, it makes it stick better. So if it's completely dry, you might not get as good a seal. Just stick it on, dip and roll it around. Not going to need much of this. There's two layers, and again, slight gap in the middle. I do think, because this is a thickness sensitive glaze, that I'm going to add a little more to the inside. Should do it. Now those get left to dry overnight. Tomorrow I'll touch up any bits that need touching up. They should be fine, but brush any more glaze on, load them into the kiln, uh, and then in a few days I'll see how they look. So it's the day after the last glaze application, and these are now dry. They're sat overnight in a fairly warm room. Um, it's always worth letting your glazes dry out as much as possible just so as little water as possible evaporates in the kiln because um, it can affect the glazes as it evaporates and then obviously it's just better for the kiln generally not to boil water. Um, what I do the next day is I add a little bit more glaze. Obviously you could do this and just have a thicker application the first time round. Um, and that would be fine so long as the glaze doesn't start to crack and crawl off, which it can when they're thicker. And because my glazes um, have a lot of movement in them because of their thickness, that's what I'm going for. I do put them on quite thick. You can sort of see with this one that um, where the, the double layer of glaze is, that it's just starting to to crack and separate, not really, but if they were even just a, a fraction thicker than this, you'd start to get very small cracks in it, which would mean that if the application was thicker the first time around, the cracks would be bigger, and that's where you get crawling. Um, whereas if you let them dry fully and then glaze over the cracks, it can help bind it together. With some glazes, it'll be a disaster and don't do that. You'll find out very quickly which ones that those are. But with most glazes, adding more the next day will reduce crawling rather than cause it. Um, and this way you get a little bit more glaze on, so you'll get a bit more movement. Um, and it's in a very controlled way. So that's it, salsa chan around the rim. Just because this is the next thing to apply glaze to and it shows it quite well, those are what I'm talking about when I say small cracks. So this application of glaze is right at the limit of what you could get away with without actually having it crawl. Um, but by glazing over the cracks and trying to kind of smear the glaze into them a bit and spread it out, what you do is you fill them back up with glaze and it binds everything together and means that rather than melting and separating, which is what they would do if they were left as they were, each crack would open up in the firing. Um, now they will all melt as one lump and you shouldn't get crawling. I mean, no guarantees, but that's the idea. And the last step before it goes in the kiln is to add more floating blue to it. Um, I feel like I should say at this stage, because I know some people will be thinking, why not just get the glaze application right first time? Or why not put thinner glaze application? Or why not adjust the glaze recipe so that it can go on thicker and so on and so forth? Everything's a trade-off. And obviously you can avoid the glaze crawling by putting a thinner coat on but you won't get the same visual effects. You can adjust the behavior of a glaze by deflocculating 
um, with sodium silicate or something like that and having reduced water content, that will also work. Because essentially what's happening is you're putting a collection of powders together with water and then as they dry out you're losing the water that's in the mix, um, which means they'll shrink, much like mud drying out um, when in the sun. So you get, that's where the, the cracking comes from. Now you can get around that by putting less water in and then you need to put a defloculant in so the mix doesn't get too thick, which brings its own problems. I mean, it, it, it does work, but it's another step and you've got to make sure you do it to the right levels. Um, thinner application solves it. You don't get the same effect. Changing the recipe, you can put calcined kaolin in. That will reduce shrinkage again because um, the clay is responsible for a lot of the shrinkage but it doesn't do it when it's calcined which is basically just firing it part way so it's no longer behaving quite like uh, raw clay. All of them are solutions in a way and complications in a way and a large part of pottery is just finding a solution that works for your studio, for your practices and in my case, I can do it this way and it works probably 99% of the time. Um, I've tried different options and different things work as well. Um, this is the easiest, simplest, most reliable way that I've found uh, that doesn't add too much complexity at any other stage. So you just got to try and see what works for you and find a compromise. But this generally is quite a good one, in my opinion.